Hi everyone! Welcome or welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, pag-uusapan natin kung paano mo ba i-ace ang iyong job interview, especially if you're applying for a tech job or a data science job. If you are new here, hi, my name is Oshin and I make videos on personal finance, everything about tech, some lifestyle hacks and whatnots, including these kinds of videos. By the way, I also started streaming some of my favorite video games, so if you want, you can check out my Twitch channel, which I will include in the description box down below. And so, wala nang patumpik-tumpik pa. Without any further ado, let's start this video and now I share to you on how you can ace the job interview. But before we start, here are some of the things that we will be talking about and what the video will contain so that you would have a rough guide kung ano ba yung mga pag-uusapan natin. The first one is that what you can do during your pre-interview, so any preparations that you might want to do. And the second one is some interview techniques that might be able to help you. And then the third one is some common interview mistakes that you might want to avoid. And the next one is some post-interview activities. I will share to you some of the tips and tricks that I know. And then the last one is the conclusion of everything that we're going to talk about or we've talked about after this video so guys just a heads up you know in my entire career I've already had like six jobs or seven jobs I lost count honestly and I've been working for almost 13 years and recently I just resigned from my tech job you can find it on this video so I guess I have some substantial experience when it comes to job interviews but for this video I wanted to be more specific so I wanted to help you on how you can ace the data science or tech interview Kasi medyo mas iba siya than job interviews in other industries. So let's begin. So the first one is that before you go to the job interview, you have to take some ano ba, preparatory actions. No? And the first one is that mas maganda na i-research mo what the company is about. The company would always have this like mission, vision statements. And be wary or be aware of what the company's core values are or what they believe in, why they're doing their businesses, why they exist. So make sure that you are familiar with that because whenever you come into a company, the core of what they're doing is actually based on their core values. Make sure that you are familiar with those. It's also a good preparatory check for you if you resonate with the company values and with your values as well. Kasi mamaya, hindi mo pala magustuhan yung mga pinoportuin nilang values. Maybe that job is not for you or that company is not for you even in the first place. Another pre-interview preparation is for you to prepare yourself on the job description itself. Also, make sure that you are familiar kung ano ba yung position that you are applying for. Because of course, it would sound really stupid if you're applying for a job and you don't know what the job is all about and kumbaga sa Tagalog or sa Filipino, hindi mo alam ko ano yung pinapasok mo. So it's a big red flag whenever you're applying for a company. You should know what the job is about, all the specific job details, the tasks that you're going to do for every single day because there might be some parts of the job that you might not even like doing. So best that you review the job description again itself. And the good thing also about that is that if you would have any clarifications or questions during your job interview, you would be able to raise them on your interview work. So for your pre-interview preparation also, it's best important that you review the most important tool that you're applying for, which is your resume or your curriculum vitae. So the difference between a resume and a CV, your curriculum vitae, is that usually a resume is one to two pages long. It's a really, really, really short summary of your professional experience. On the other hand, a curriculum vitae usually contains all the nitty-gritty details of your professional journey. So, kunwari kung nakaka five years or six years ka na sa iyong career, then yung curriculum vitae usually mahaba talaga siya. Like, lahat ng job description mo, your skills, and for each job description, you would detail out kung ano yung ginagawa mo, you would put descriptions. So if you're also applying, make sure that you know what the company is asking for, if either it's a resume or a curriculum vitae. If you guys want to know like a good format of a resume or a CV, let me know down below. I might try to make a template for you guys para at least magamit niyo. So the next part that we're going to talk about is some interview techniques that might be helpful for you when you're applying for a job. So one technique that actually hindi masyado hindi din discuss everywhere else is that the importance of non-verbal communication. Sometimes words are not enough whenever you're applying for a job and sometimes it would really take practice but all the mannerisms that you will be portraying or you will be showing during your interview are extremely important and it would give first and even everlasting impressions 
to your future employer. So mannerisms seems like your hand gestures, your eye contact, and even you know some extra movements that you might be doing whenever you're being interviewed. These are extremely important when you're having that interview. Some of your interviewers might even be psychology graduates, so alam mo yon, interpret nila if you're a bit nervous, and it speaks volumes whenever you're applying for a job. If you want to practice some nonverbal communication techniques, yung isang friend mo na makakatulong sa yo is actually the mirror itself. So if you have a decent mirror, you can practice the gestures or everything that you wanted to to do during your interview, and that would be extremely useful. Somehow it takes a little bit of practice, but imagine also yourself sometimes talking to a friend. Sometimes it's also like that, and then you also do hand gestures. It comes naturally, and practicing mo lang ng practicing until it really comes naturally. The second interview techniques that I would like to share to you guys are answering some technical questions. So means and there are some companies that would administer exams for them to be able to gauge your technical knowledge. But there are some companies na hindi naman na nila kailangan ng, you know, exam. Some of them, they would ask you directly during an interview. And best to prepare yourself for these kinds of technical questions. In the US and in some other big tech companies, what they would do is that aside from the exam, they would even ask you some technical questions during your interview. I'm not sure with other disciplines ng tech industry, but in the data science industry, especially in the US, they would even ask you about data structures and algorithms and some functions and then some situations. They will give you some situations and then you should know how to debug them or how to solve solve them using code or some logical processes that you might need to use para ma solve yung mga specific questions but so far here in my experience binigyan lang ako ng exam noon and then they asked me to present my exam and then after that parang tinanong, tinanong lang nila ako on some of my thought processes why I did this and why I did that a lot of tech companies here in the Philippines are actually looking for that kind of logical thinking. Sometimes there's no such thing as a right or wrong answer, but it's more really of how you arrived on that answer. And that's what they're usually interested in. Because you know, in tech jobs and in the tech industry, may tamang sagot, but there are so many ways for you to be able to arrive on that answer. And sometimes tech companies would like to gauge the efficiency and on how you did it and it would, would it, did it save you a lot of time and then what are some of the problems that you encountered and how you solved them. So some interview techniques that I would like to share to you is during your behavioral questions. For behavioral questions, actually, medyo straightforward lang siya. You really have to be honest as much as possible. Okay? And usually, kaya naga administer ang mga tech companies ng behavioral questions is that they would like to know if you are definitely a culture fit for their company. Kaya sabi ko sa inyo kanina, you have to review the mission, vision, and the core values of the company that you are applying for. Kasi makamamaya, maaring you are excellent in the skills, but eh, you flop on the soft skills, like the behavioral questions, then higher chances na baka hindi ka pa rin tanggapin ng company that you're applying for, di ba? Kasi mahirap naman na hindi mo rin makakasundo yung mga makakatrabaho mo. And another interview technique that I would like to share to you which is extremely important and I feel like a lot of employers are really expecting for applicants to do is to ask questions. Guys, wag na wag yung kakalimutan magtanong, no? Minsan red flag sa mga recruiters kapag hindi talaga nagtatanong yung mga candidates. So some of the questions that you can ask are number 1, yung job description mismo and about the job itself and number 2, some of the timelines that you might want to expect or you might need to expect when you're applying for the job. Make sure that you are aware of these questions and make sure that you ask them to your future employer so that para at least malino din sa yo at malino din sa recruiter mo yung mga expectations niya sa bawat isa. Now that we're done with some of the interview techniques, the next thing that we are going to discuss are some common interview mistakes that hopefully you could avoid them. So the first mistake is of course the lack of preparation. No? So madami na akong sinabing tips kanina during the past few minutes that I've been discussing this. So there's this one famous quote that I've always put in heart whenever I'm doing something and it's that if you fail to plan and then 
it means that you're planning to fail. Make sure that you prepare yourself in these interviews, no? Mas maganda na na, you know that you did your best even though there are some mistakes and that's fine. Mistakes do happen in life and it gives you lessons on how you can move forward. Now, the second one is an inappropriate attire. Depende kasi din sa nature ng interview mo. So kung online naman siya, syempre hindi na nila titingnan yung pants mo, no? Basta just wear something decent. Ako usually na advice ko basta may kung color then okay na yon then it doesn't really have to be that much grand as long as you know if it's an online interview and if they will request for you to turn your webcam on then I guess it's fine but if it's an on-site interview definitely at least mamili ka ng matinong damit no make sure that you can choose a style that would still help you feel comfortable when you're being interviewed. Iwasan niyo yung medyo mainit, of course, basta as long as it makes you feel comfortable. Another common interview mistake is overconfidence. So guys, ito ha, when you're in an interview or in a job interview, you assume that you're actually in the battlefield. And overconfidence can make you lose that war. Don't underestimate your recruiters kasi matalino sila. I mean, especially yung mga HR recruiters, that's their career, that's, that's their profession, and they know what they're doing. That's the kind of job that they've been doing and they've been studying for so many years. If you're a bit overconfident, then it will not really help your case and it will not you help land a job. Be humble because humility is one trait that recruiters are looking from candidates. Another common interview mistake is poor communication skills. So, minsan, if you don't know how to make your thoughts coherent and if you don't know how to summarize them and if you don't know how to defend them so eh, major red flag yon sa mga recruiters because even though we're working in tech we would still need to collaborate with a lot of people and that means that we need to have proper communication skills so that we would be able to convey what we're working on and how we're solving our problems through proper communication so extremely important na you know how to summarize your thoughts to make them coherent and to make them understandable and sometimes to make them idiot friendly or idiot proof what's the right term for that maybe idiot proof is a better term all right so now that you're done with your proper interview and i've shared to you some of the techniques so the next thing that you are gonna do is you have to make some post interview activities so no bio mga examples nito so number one you might want to send a thank you email to your recruiters so that it reflects also the kind of person you are. It gives an impression to the recruiters that you are giving due diligence and pwede rin na madala mo siya during your work. And another follow-up that you can do is that if you have any other questions, it is also the best time for you to ask these questions during your follow-up emails, no? Basically, TLDR, yung ginagawa mo dito is you're trying to keep the conversation warm with your potential employer. Especially, lalo na if yung itong company na to, di ba? Dream job mo pala. So, might as well try to keep the conversation warm with your recruiters kasi sobrang na-appreciate nila yon. And, to be honest with you guys, lagi ko tong ginagawa before na lagi ako nagfo-follow up sa mga ina ko, like if there are any news and, and so on and so forth. And, it really gives the impression na gusto mo talaga yung trabaho and gusto mo makapasok doon. Okay, some final words before I end this video. So basically, lahat ng mga sinabi ko, hopefully sana makatulong sa inyo. And these are all helpful tips that I did, I experienced. That's why I was able to land good jobs all throughout my career for 13 years. This is not to discourage everyone, but of course, to those who want to shift to tech and or to the data science industry, nakakaranas talaga ang marami tao nang minsan nag apply ng 50 jobs and only, you know, tatlo or apat lang yung babalik sa'yo or minsan 100 jobs tapos lima or anim lang yung tatawag sa'yo for an interview. <laughs> That's how the tech industry is right now. Sobrang saturated ng market. Ang daming nag off and it's also recession right now. Pero, don't make this a reason for you para pang hinaang ng loob. There are some jobs na pwede mong i-take for the experience of it and kung ayaw mo naman na magtrabaho muna and if you want to hone your skills instead, then might as well you can try to volunteer for some NGOs who need some data analysts or data scientists to help them on analyzing their data. Yung mga nag-a-accept ng mga internship programs, 
So yeah, let, maybe you can try these companies and wag kayong mapanghihinaan ng loob because that's okay. That's really part of the process. And with that guys, thank you very much for watching and if you find value in this video, please do not forget to smash that like button and also subscribe to my channel and click the bell button beside it so that you will be notified whenever I have a new video, alright? And again guys, as I always say, the more you learn, the more you earn. See you on my next video everyone. Bye!